a load of old rubbish. Miss Darby was one of those people who never threw anything away. You never know when you might need it, was one of her favorite sayings. She lived alone in a large Victorian house across the road from us. Although I never went into her house, I knew it was full of valuable things, antique furniture, person carpets and so on. She loved art. Every inch of her walls was taken up by paintings. I can remember my father saying that she was a Staffordshire Derby. I had no idea what he meant. I found out years later that the Derby family had made their money from coal mining in the country of Staffordshire, which children used to make up stories about her. My sister Alice, who was a romantic, whispered to us she was engaged to be married, but her fiancé was killed in a great war. Now she lives alone, broken-hearted. My brother Alan, who was just coming into adult scene, had another idea. They say she's a white witch and she can cure spots just by staring at them. With my wild imagination, I had my own story about Miss Darby. She's got six children. She keeps them locked in a dark cellar. She rarely went out and nobody came to visit her. Nobody that is, except for Mrs. Triggs, her housekeeper. Mrs. Triggs was a friend of my mother's and a great gossip. One day, I heard her saying how Miss Darby never threw anything away. Bundles of newspapers, hundreds of them everywhere. I try to throw them out, but she just goes out and brings them back into the house. I give up. Have another cup of tea, Mrs. Triggs. It was only when she died that we found out that Miss Darby had two nephews. They inherited everything, her money and the house and all its contents. The nephews came across to say hello and my mother made them a cup of tea. Are you thinking of moving into the house? My mother asked politely. Good heavens, no. We live in Stafford. No, we've just come down to empty the house. I believe your aunt has uh, had a lot of nice things. The nephews nodded. They described what was in the house. It sounded like Aladdin's cave. Over the next few days, we children watched them coming and going and wished we could join in. Most of the stuff was taken away in a huge furniture van. They also had a smaller van, which took away all the rubbish that their aunt had refused to get rid of, mostly great bundles of newspapers. My brother Alan asked the nephews if he could have one of the bundles of newspapers. We read the headline on the top newspaper, Russian tanks roll into Budapest. It was dated 10 November 1956. Alan took out his pen knife and cut the string with which the bundle was tied. We spread the newspapers out, curious to read about things that had happened over 50 years ago. What's this? said Alice, holding something she had found inside the top newspaper. Here is another, said Alan, opening the second newspaper in the bundle. And another and another, I shouted as I worked my way through the newspapers. What are they? They look like paintings without frames. This bundle alone contained 25 beautiful paintings. We later learned that they were originals worth at least 500 pounds each. By the time the nephews learned of our discovery, they had already thrown out most of the hundreds of bundles of newspapers. Thank you for attending this session. Do share and subscribe to this channel for more lessons like this. Check out other video lessons by clicking on the video.